Now, in its fifth year, the Fairfax Media and Westpac Women of Influence Awards recognise and celebrate women from all walks of life who make a positive difference to fellow New Zealanders. Joining us now are some seriously influential women. Fairfax Media's Group Executive Editor and Awards Judge Sinead Belcher, fellow judge and past category winner Frances Valentine and key influencer of the programme, Westpac New Zealand's Sue Foley. Welcome. Thank Wonderful you. to have you here. Absolutely. What a lineup. Absolutely. Yeah. Pleasure to have you here. Um, so let's start with you. You've been with the program since it began. Yes. So tell us a little bit about the history and how it came about. Um, actually, ironically, it was actually a guy who was actually the driving force behind this, Chris Myram, who um, actually is a former journalist. And Chris had seen the idea over in Australia and thought, this is, he's got two daughters. And he thought, actually, this is exactly what we should be focusing on here in New Zealand. And we felt, you know, we needed a partner and Fairfax had similar values, particularly around women and everything like that. So that was how it dropped. Look, we had no budget. Um, it was done on a shoestring. I have, I'm trying to think whether I even got permission to do it. And <laughs> <laughs> do it first, ask permission later. Absolutely. OK, Sinead, can you talk us through the selection process? Um, you know, the finalists were announced in July. How are the nominees selected? So first of all, people nominate um, anyone they think is deserving of the award, or uh, people can nominate themselves as well. Women can nominate themselves, which is a really great way of people standing up for the achievements they've had. And then there is a bit of a shortlist process, and then the judges, you know, Francis and I and others, get to look at the different categories. There are 10 different categories, and really decide, you know, what makes these women um, so influential. Um, it's, it's such a privilege to, to do that judging because the stories are so inspiring and the achievements are so inspiring and it's really difficult sometimes to be able imagine. to make, to, to narrow things down. To whittle it down. Yeah. Um, so Francis, the nominees, they're generally, they're not necessarily household names, are they? No, not at all. No, actually sometimes um, the beauty of this is it really highlights people who are doing amazing things in small communities. Mm. You know, and they may be you know, they may be in a rural community, but they're kind of the glue. And so people are, are putting them forward, saying, "Hey, these people are doing something quite remarkable." They may not come to the attention of the normal sort of media, but actually in their space, they're just you know amazing women. So what did you win? What was your category? In innovation. So a couple of years ago. So. So I work in the, in the field of innovation and technology. And so for me, that was, again, phenomenal, just having a, an awards that recognises non-typical fields. You mm -hmm. know, business is well recognised often, but actually when you're sitting on the fringes of innovation and technology as a female, it's, you know, it's nice to have somewhere that you can find that recognition. Mm. And I guess this whole process is about celebrating you know, incredible leaders in our community that are women. Um, is it hard to find with the 10 different categories an overall winner? Because I guess they're strong in each of their categories. Sue, so, is it tough? It is really, really tough. Um, you know, and it is, that's why we bring in fabulous people like Francis and Dame <laughs> Roseanne Mayo to help judge. Um, it is really, really hard. And I know that um, there's, but they've really had to dig pretty deep to come up with a final winner because at the end of the day, when you look at across all the categories, all the category winners on their own, you think, gosh, how on earth do you choose? Yeah, well, how do you do it? I mean, yeah. Sinead, how do you do it? <laughs> well, I think <laughs> it is with such it is, vast yeah. different areas. I think in the end, between all of the judges' discussions, um, we really keep coming back to the idea of influence and what that means and the impact that you have on others outside your own personal success or in personal endeavours. And there is, you know, someone sort of rises to the top. But we're really um, keen to stress that all of the um, women who have been recognised are women of influence in their own right. right. Rather, they're already, um, they deserve to be recognised for that rather than just being finalists in a, an awards. So we want the day, there's a great forum during the day and the evening to be really special for them and that they feel like they've been recognised for what they've accomplished. Well, let's talk about some of the past winners to help put it into perspective. So, so I'll start with you, um, the Organic Initiative Director. Uh, tell us more about her. Helen Davidson, Helen Robinson rather. Yeah, so I mean Helen, I mean, was um, last year's winner and if you sort of look at some of the work that she's done around products and that environmental, you know, doing the right thing by the sustainability and everything like that, um, pretty amazing. And I think that's what I really love about these awards is people that aren't necessarily household names but are doing amazing things in their community get recognised and I think that's what's so special and I mean obviously when someone like Leslie Elliott when who set up the Sophie Elliott Foundation I mean there was not mm. a dry eye in the house mm. when her name mm. was called so you know it's just incredible people doing amazing things. So Francis who are your fellow judges? 
Oh, look, there's a, there's a quite large number of judges so across different sectors. There's probably too many to name here, but um, but there is a good diversity across, and we have some really robust conversations and debates. they lock you in a room and say, yeah. you're not coming out until you've got a Supreme Court? I have to say, initially when we're going through them on a paper form, you know, we get, it, I start up thinking, oh, it's going to take me one weekend, and actually it takes a lot longer than mm -hmm. that because actually each one has a story, and sometimes you see people where they're on... They've got layer upon layer. They're doing small things, but multiple things in there, mm. in what their field is. So, so they're known to so many different people in different ways. And so, what I found is, it's like a rabbit hole. You end up down in the space and thinking, "Gosh, how am I ever going to work this one out?" But funnily enough, when we get back together and start comparing, actually, you start to see people who just cannot let go of some individuals who are like, that person is truly extraordinary. Oh, it sounds so exciting. And it sounds like a, a great day is going to be planned too for the awards as well. Yeah, and really important too, I think, these awards. So good luck. It's going to be fantastic. Yeah, rather you than me, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> now, the Women of Influence Award winners will be announced on September the 7th at the awards dinner at Sky City in Auckland. And the New Zealand Women of Influence Forum is held that morning. You can check out their website for ticket details. And the team have set up a special discount for the cafe viewers. Enter Forum 17, the cafe, and you receive 20% off your Women of Influence Forum ticket. Yeah, well worth checking that out. Thanks once again, ladies, for coming in.